So here I have $180 worth of steel. Some tube steel and some flat stock. And I'm going to turn this into a $1,000 roof rack for my bus. How do I know it's worth $1,000? You want to buy it? $1,000. No, I don't know. But uh, I imagine if I had this made, it cost a bit more than $180. Old 86 Toyota pickup. I bought this pickup brand new in 1986. It has about a quarter million miles on it. And it just keeps running and running and running and running. Probably because I keep up on my espresso. That's probably it. So this is one inch by two inch tube steel. It's uh, eighth inch thick. The same stuff that they made my lumber rack out of. I didn't make this, but it's the same stuff. So these are 20 feet long, and uh, I'm going to start off by making two rectangular frames. Uh, one is going to be the base, and the other part is going to be the top, kind of analogous to this part here. Some call it junk. I call it my Harbor Freight metal cutting bandsaw. Well, if I was used to a real bandsaw, maybe I'd call it junk too, but it works. Anyway, I'm going to cut this in half at a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to have two of these pieces. There are four of them, actually. Four of these pieces when I'm done. It's not the quickest thing in the world, but it's accurate, and it works. And it's really important that all these pieces be exactly the same length. What I like to do is uh, I cut the first one. That's my pattern piece, and I lined it up exactly down here, flush, and taped it, and uh, then if the blade just barely grazes that, see, then I know it's cutting the same length. Okay, so here's the one piece, kind of a before and an after. Here's the after first, I guess. This is, I'm making two of these, and this will be either the top or the bottom rail, and here's this one about to go. I've laid these out, I'm going to take my grinder, and grind these edges here where I'm going to be welding. I'm using these magnets in the corners to hold everything together and then I'm using a square and then the final check is you measure the corners um, diagonally like this and if the corners measure diagonally you got a square frame. So you keep messing with it till they're diagonal and weld it up. The welder I'm using, Harbor Freight and uh, for those of you who think this is junk, I mean it might be. This was $90 on sale. Duty cycle on this, you can weld for two minutes and you have to stop for eight minutes. Which so far for me is not a problem because I'm not, you know, a very fast welder. But uh, I could see how that's probably going to be a stumbling block as I get a little bit better and have bigger projects to do. But for now, this works and um, it's a learning tool. You know, $90 for something to learn on. Get the warranty. I fried the first one. This is the second one. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly as a learning tool, I think it's definitely worth it to get this. And when you learn how to weld, get something better. So here's the bottom rail from the bottom. You see I put these metal cross members here. Um, I would call them joists. I don't know. In metal world, what it's called, but... <laughs> I've welded these on here, and you can see these are sideways, so there's a bit of a, a lip on here. And again, this is the bottom. I'm about to flip this over and uh, put on the top rail. So here's how I'm doing this. I put these boards down. Uh, these are 2x6. I was actually going to use these for making a table, but... See, the table. I'm glad I didn't make the table yet because they've been 
coming in handy. But see, I clamped the base, and I'm just using clamps to raise these up and uh, into position. Here's how this party is coming along. I've got these uprights connecting the top and the bottom are tacked into place. I'm about to weld those. But then this frame will be done except for the mounting hardware, which I'll be doing next. So the way I'm going to attach this guy is going to be similar to the way I did the solar rack. So um, this is a piece of flat stock. This is cut at the correct angle. This on and bolt it in. Now to get the angle, I'll show you what I'm going to do for that. Here's a piece of 1x2. It's cut exactly the same length as the width of this rack. And I've got two more pieces cut shorter. And I'm using two of these angle braces. Well, the light's not very good today. Sorry, it's someone needs to tell Oregon it's summer because it should be hot and sunny today, but it's not this time of year. Um, anyway, so here's what I did. I put this uh, mock-up thing on here, and these are some welding magnets just holding it in place, and it is centered. Now it's up higher than I'm going to want the roof rack, and I'll adjust for the height in a minute. But right now I want to get this angle here. So I'm going to take this one by four, which is about the same width as the flat stock. I'm just going to take my pencil and mark this line here. And then I will set my saw to whatever angle that is, and that will give me the angle that I need for the correct uh, the correct cut there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that on either side and see how it fits um, and then see I can adjust it up or down this way and figure out how long I want to make it. Okay so for this guy can't really see that. For this guy it was 24 and a half degrees all right, so I just, you know, I turned this until I cut a piece of scrap, make sure it was the correct angle. But you can barely see the pencil trace there. See, it's exactly right on the line. Yeah, so I'm going to cut the other one and then adjust the height up and down. I want the rack in the center to be about, you know, an inch or so above the roof. Okay, this looks good to me. It's about a little bit of an inch or so above the the crown there and so and so now this guy is going to give me the angle so I've got the angle here and then from here to right there where the the cross member hits that's the length I want okay so this is an easy way to figure out the angle and uh, so now I'll set my bandsaw this angle and this long. Here's how these legs turned out. And again, I just used the welding magnet to hold them in place and weld them up separately. Now I'm going to flip this over and weld them with this upside down, make it a little easier. In the meantime, I started painting this. So paint is important. Not only does it look nicer, it keeps it from rusting. This stuff will rust up pretty quickly. If these are not all lined up correctly, or if I got the angle or the length wrong, I'm going to be hating life. But uh, I think they're right, and we will deal with that if it happens. Okay, so it's really taking shape here. If it didn't make sense before, it should now. It's upside down. These rails on either side will fit the curve of the roof upstairs there. And they will have bolts, big bolts. Going through them into the ceiling, and we will find out, me included, how I'm going to get this up on the roof. I have a couple of ideas ranging from cheap to more elaborate. So, you know, I could always rent a crane. That sounds expensive, but uh, I'm just saying. 
I don't think I'll have to do that, but there are a number of ways to get it up there, and I will find the cheapest one that works. How am I going to get it up there? Well, attempt number one, at least, hopefully one of one, <laughs> I built this frame, and uh, I put some some angle brackets in the angles, just to keep it honest, because who wants a dishonest frame, eh? I just put some come-alongs up there at that top of the frame there. And I'm pulling it up. And we'll see. I'm thinking at some point the, the weight is going to want to distribute back that way. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You'll see what happens. Well, here's what we got so far. It's about halfway up there. This thing slipped forward. Luckily, I had this to hit for it to hit it against. I know somebody out there watching already knew that was going to happen, huh? He said, that ain't going to work if things going to slip forward. Well, partly right. And uh, so now I'm pulling it from the other side. Here, I'll show you. Now I got these uh, long rope to that tree down there. And to this tree here. And then I'm pulling it up this way. So, wish me luck. All right, well, here's where I'm at. You see this is, the uh, rack is pretty much at the top of this frame that I made here. And originally I was hoping the frame would kind of flip up, but it's not going to because it's jammed against here. So I'm going to cut this frame in half. I'm going to cut it about here. And uh, I'm going to put uh, something like that, a screw on there. A few of these to hold everything from going, flipping the wrong way. And I'm going to cut this, and I'm hoping that uh, this is going to tip back that way. And then it's my bitch. So, one thing um, I should mention is don't forget to do something like this. It would be a little dramatic to say that I almost pulled the frame on my head, but I was, you know, cranking on it on the other side on standing on the ladder. And it suddenly it's kind of started balancing back, you know, and I thought, oh, wow, I don't have anything to prevent it from cranking too far and going on my head and knocking me off the ladder and landing on top of me. So I put this strap over here to prevent that. Um, so, you know, be careful if you're doing something like this. This thing probably weighs a couple hundred pounds, at least 150 pounds. And... Uh, I can lift it by myself, you know, on, at least on one end fairly easily, but to try and jack it up this high was a bit of a challenge. It took me all day. And I got this stuff. This um, is the stuff you put would put between a canopy and pick up top of the pickup bed. And this is the same stuff I used on this uh, solar rack here, just as a kind of a buffer between the two pieces of metal. So let's go upstairs and I'll show you what I got up here. Now I happen to have two floor jacks. These are, you know, light duty. Um, these are good if you ever have to put chains on your car during the snow. They're really nice to use one of these. But anyway, I, I happen to have a couple of them. I have another one that's broken. But I use these and jack this off the frame here on this side. I tried doing one on either end and it just was too unstable. So I'm going to do one end at a time. I'm going to disassemble the frame so that all that's left is that 2x4 at the far end. And I'm going to put this stuff as far down as I can and uh, let it down over here and then go and do the, the back end. All right, well, I'd say it's a puppy. Ready to put down, it's centered, and uh, I just got to, I can pick it up and kick these out. They were convenient though. I could have just used a block of wood, but if you got them, use them, huh? And then here's what it looks like on the inside. Use these big washers here, and then a regular washer and a lock washer. And these are, uh, I think they're category 8, way overkill I'm sure, but these are uh, very, you know, the strongest kind of bolts, fasteners you can get. And this is a little RV. I put a little bit of RV caulk in 
in there and uh, I haven't had any trouble with these leaking yet at least and uh, a quick little note if you're gonna if you're gonna buy fasteners like this um, go to a fastener store I went I think it's called Fasco and I bought a box of nuts you know a box of washers a box of bolts and it was a fraction of the cost at the local box store a lot of stuff is cheaper at the local box store but not stuff like this um, not specialty items not steel not fasteners at least if you need a lot of them these would have been probably three times as much and plus I wouldn't have probably been able to find them because I, I needed quite a few of them so there's a little tip for you you need, you need fasteners go to a fastener store Google it you'll find one nearby mm -hmm.